सुखिनरामयाद्रा पश्यंत माँ कशि दुखवा भवे ओ शाति 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 हरि ओम तत्स मे ऑल बी हैप्पी मे नो वन सफर मे ऑल सी गुडनेस इन अदर्स May no one suffer. May there be peace on earth. This is our ancient prayer. This is my prayer too. Now I have to give the talk. The subject of my talk is Bhakti Yoga and the Will of God. What is Bhakti Yoga? <coughs> Bhakti yoga means bhakti means love of God. How love of God can give us God experience, or how it can help us to commune with God, that is the subject matter of bhakti yoga. But first, let me talk a little bit about God. concept of god that we have in hinduism according to hinduism god is the source from which everything has come there is a saying ek hum bahut syama prajaye eti that means i am one but i will be many that's why i will multiply <laughs> as the god is saying that <laughs> yes that's a god is the source has become this manifold universe and this universe is the universe of time space and causation before this world was created there was no time no space and no causation so the source of this world which is god was beyond time that means eternity beyond space that means infinity and also pure consciousness so this is one <laughs> this is one effort to tell us about god but also there are sayings like god is among manasugocharam you can never describe god through your words and minds cannot <laughs> ordinary minds cannot know god still we try <laughs> talk about god there are two kinds of knowledge theoretical knowledge and experiential knowledge <laughs> we have heard the expression mother lila and <clears throat> we have only the theoretical knowledge of what mother lila is that a woman who is a mother she only knows what mother lila is her knowledge is experiential knowledge so also we have only theoretical knowledge about god <coughs> is there anyone is experiential knowledge of god yes our scriptures say that those who are divine incarnations that is <laughs> divinity in human form 
uh, divine incarnations. Yes, they have experiential knowledge. And according to our tradition, if I take use the analogy of God as light, then we are so many light bulbs. Anyone equipped with a mind is a light bulb, but with different wattage. God is present everywhere equally, but not manifested equally. God is more manifested in that kind of mind, which is unselfish. God is fully manifested in such minds which are totally unselfish. <laughs> yes. That's why the plants, they don't have minds and inert objects like chairs, tables, etc. They don't have minds. A divinity is equally present in them, but there is no manifestation of divinity. In animals, there is some manifestation. In human beings, much, much more. Then again, human beings differ from one another because their, in their minds, God is not equally manifested mind which is 100% unselfish, their divinity is fully manifested. And only such souls are called divine incarnations. They are like multi-trillion watt light bulbs, as I say. Others are 5 watt light bulbs, 10 watt light bulbs, depending on how much divinity is manifested through those minds. <clears throat> there are some 1,000 odd light bulbs. We call them saintly. So, <clears throat> we <clears throat> have divinity in us. But what obstructs us from experiencing divinity the quality of our minds. A mind which is totally unselfish, their divinity is fully manifested. So, this <coughs> path of bhakti or bhakti yoga, that must help us to make us 100% unselfish. And then we will experience divinity. This self-life which we have <coughs> is to be directed to God. <coughs> yes. Once, one young man, his name is <coughs> Harinath, he came to Sri Ramakrishna who was a divine incarnation. Sri Ramakrishna is a multi-trillion watt light bulb. And said to him, revered sir, I have lustfulness sometimes. How shall I get rid of this lustfulness? And Sri Ramakrishna said to him, you direct your lustfulness to God, then it will be something, become something different. It will become pure love of God. And when you will acquire pure love of God, you will experience divinity. We sometimes wrongly think that the babies are like angels. 
but they are almost 100% animals because they are the most selfish most selfish they love only themselves gradually they learn to be a little less selfish then that means they will care for others they will learn to care for their parents their relatives and people of the of their community as they grow up those things will come so that selfishness will be expanded to include more people eventually if they can expand their selfishness to include the entire human kind then their selfishness has become almost unselfishness as i always use this analogy of mine <coughs> potassium cyanide is a potent poison one spoonful of that will kill a person but he takes it to a large lake which has fresh water and then he dissolves that potassium one spoonful of potassium cyanide in that water then if he drinks water there won't be any poisonous effect because the poison has become almost infinitely <laughs> diluted that's why sri sharada devi another multi trillion watt light bulb divine incarnation <coughs> she gave an advice to a lady who didn't have peace of mind and she said to her my child if you want peace of mind then don't see the defects in others see only your own <laughs> defects and make the entire world your family everybody is your own that means expand your selfishness to include the entire world so that expanded selfishness is as good as unselfishness which it has become infinitely diluted yes so the path of devotion <coughs> we all are born with self love and that self love is caused by our ego i have said this many times in the past i will say this again that the owner and the object owned cannot be the same i own my mind so i must be different from my mind as the owner as its owner but some problem is there the idea of my individual existence is a thought of my conscious mind that i guess i or ego this ego i am not that ego different from it if my ego is gone then what remains is divinity only it is due to my ego i am like a wave in the ocean of divinity all people with their egos are so many waves if they lose their egos they will lose their forms they will come to know that they are all one and the same divinity so the sum and substance of all the religions is that you be totally unselfish then you will become divinity swami vivekananda great saint used to say unselfishness is god that is very true if you get rid of our ego then there won't be any selfishness in us
people love many things some people love even their pets <laughs> why do they love their pets <laughs> because their ego finds satisfaction in having pets <laughs> a dog owner <laughs> love is her dog because when the dog sees him or her the dog starts wagging tail and expressing joy that person's ego becomes satisfied i heard this from one doctor who was in india he was a devotee of god he never married he was living in a town at the foothills of the himalayas mountain and beyond the mountain was that country tibet and during summer some tibetans would come down to that place to sell wool because there are plenty of sheep there in tibet to sell wool and with that money they would buy certain some commodities such as salt and other things which they would carry with them to tibet so the doctor therefore used to meet many tibetans and as he was a doctor he told one tibetan who had come to sell wool he said i can be of some help to you only when you start having a fever at that time malaria was rampant so this tibetan should get <coughs> malaria and then they would come to the doctor and he would treat them and he would cure them so one such tibetan merchant who had come to sell wool he had had malaria and that got cured by the doctor so out of gratitude he said to the doctor doctor now i sold all the wool that i had I, that i brought with me now i have gone back to my country and then he said i you have cured my illness so i want to give one of my dogs to you and those are sherpa dogs very large dogs in tibet they use that dog it is a fully grown dog the doctor asked that man well such a is a fully grown dog how can i make it a pet of mine then that tibetan said it is very easy doctor for the first few days whatever food you will give to this dog you chew a little and with your saliva there is saliva will be there in that food and give that food to the dog to eat and then the dog will be your pet that's what actually came dogs love food and the in the smell of the person saliva they know who has given this and they become devoted to that person so the doctor did like ways and the dog actually saved him from a burglar the burglar had entered his home <laughs> and the, when the doctor was not there and then the dog attacked that burglar and the burglar felt <laughs> scared and was lying on the floor and the dog was on top of him and when the doctor came back he saw that and that person said please help me please help me that person said that he was in distress because he was not finding any job from which he could get money 
and the doctor said if i can provide you with a job then will you tip still stop stealing the person said yes sir then the doctor was able to find a job for that person so this is on story the dogs also are selfish and this that's why they love those people who give them good food and people have love for members of the opposite sex many people have and this this love if it can be focused on god then one will experience god there is the story of saint tulasidas tulasidas was extremely attached to his wife tulasidas was at that time a young man and he was very attached to his wife and his wife's parents lived just two or three villages away but he would not allow her to go to her parents even he didn't want to miss her even for one night and then one day tulsidas went somewhere and meanwhile his wife left home and went to her parents walking all that distance and when tulsidas returned home he saw that his wife was not there then on inquiry he came to know from the neighbors that she had gone to her parents home immediately tulsina tulsidas went walking towards her parents home and went there at night anyway for the wife it was an embarrassing situation nevertheless the in-laws of tulsidas they welcomed him gave him food <laughs> and then at night tulsidas was with his wife in a room and his wife said to tulsidas i am extremely embarrassed why are you so attached to me if you have such attachment to god perhaps you would experience god hearing that tulsidas left left home he said yes let me love god and this love which was last for tulsidas as a wife got transformed into love of god and after a while he experienced divinity he became a saint and there was another saint al mirabai she was a princess in those days there were many native princely states in india she belonged to one she was not interested in anything other than in god and to god and to her god was sri krishna and then she wrote composed some songs one song says nit nahane se hari mile tu jal jantu hoi if by taking shower every day one would experience god then i would rather be an aquatic animal but aquatic animals don't experience god almul kha kar hari mile to badur badrai it is if by eating only fruits and roots one could experience god then there are so many bats and monkeys have they experienced god no tiran bhakan se hari mile to bahut mrigi aja if by eating only vegetables that means grass 
one will experience God, then there are so many deer and goats. Have they experienced God? No. Stri chhod kar hari mile to bahut rahe hai khoja. If one thinks that those who think that by giving up their wives they would experience God, that is not true because there are so many eunuchs. They don't have wives. Have they experienced God? At the end, Mira says, Mira ka hai bina prem se nami le nand lala. Mira is saying that without love of God, one cannot experience God. So, love of God. If we can direct our love to God, then that becomes bhakti, devotion to God. And that is that is uh, the devotion to God is called bhakti. And through that bhakti, one can experience God. Some may say, how is it possible to love the unseen God? Well, it is quite possible. Consider a posthumous child. He has not seen his father because he was born after the death of his father. How does he know that there is God? There is that he had father? With the testimony of his mother. His mother could describe his father. Even show a picture of his father. <laughs> so those who have ex- seen God, with, with their help, we can have faith in God. The divine incarnations and saints, they have experiential knowledge of the existence of God. So, with their help, we can also have belief in God. And then we should love that unseen God. And one who follows this path of devotion, Sri Ramakrishna used to say, in this age, Bhakti Yoga or the path of divine love that is the most suitable. Selfish love has to be directed to God. And a person who follows this path of Bhakti Yoga Everything in this world seems to be running according to the will of God. God is running everything. Sri Ramakrishna used to say, replace your I with thou. I and mine with thou and thine. God, everything is you, everything is yours. That's what he taught. This is the secret. He also said to one devotee, think that your house is not your house. It is God's house. You are God's child. If you have a spouse, then the spouse is also God's child. And if you have children, they are also God's children. Then when you... (coughs) Sweep the floor of your home. It is like sweeping the floor of the temple of God. Gradually, you will feel that everything is being done by God. Everything belongs to God. And then one will feel that everything that happens, that also happens according to the will of God. 
some people are under the wrong impression <laughs> that the suffering is not caused by god <laughs> but that is not true what to us is suffering may be enjoyment to another consider a person he is suffering from a physical illness he is suffering and then he goes to see a doctor and the doctor is able to earn money the doctor <laughs> he is suffering causes joy to the doctor my big brother was older than me by 12 years he was a <laughs> doctor and once he was talking to the two two doctor friends in their office then <laughs> they were this do- two doctors there unhappy they were saying what has happened to this town there in a town which is in upper assam in india called tinsukia so what has happened to this town people don't even suffer from fever <laughs> they are unhappy because people are not suffering and that's why they are not having patients my brother was not that type of a doctor he had doctor <laughs> after his getting medical degree degree he studied other subjects and he used to use microscope to detect germs and all those things so a fisherman let us suppose he has thrown his net into the lake and then when he pulls up the net it is laden with fish so it is a cause of joy to the first to the fisherman but what about the fish <laughs> are they happy <laughs> well you can easily imagine that it is something terrible for them as long as we have selfishness we identify with our with what we are not we identify with our bodies with our minds which we are not because we are the owners of them but due to that ego we think that the person thinks that he or she is the mind he or she is the <laughs> he is is the body which she or she possesses something happens to the body he or she will think well this is happening to me <laughs> because of that sense of ownership but no the owners owner and the own cannot be the same we are not even our ego because the mind is something owned by us and ego is a thought of that conscious mind how can we be our ego if we can get rid of our ego then we are divinity and only through selfless love that ego disappears all selfishness is caused by the ego So through practice of unselfishness that the ego will disappear there are some very saintly souls they wrote some books on bhakti yoga <laughs> there is a saintly soul called narada he wrote he is in bhakti yoga he explained what bhakti is then there is shandilya another say he also <laughs> wrote his understanding of what is bhakti we have to write our own <laughs> treatises on what bhakti is 
from our own experiences. And the common experience is that the emotion which is present in us in abundance, that is love, self-love, that has to be transformed into divine love. That has to be focused on God. then we will see that everything happens according to God's will. There is a story of a cloth seller. He was actually a weaver. He used to get yarn and weave a cloth. That's how he would, and he would sell that cloth and he would get some money. But he was a great devotee of God. According to him, and he would chant the holy name of God and then eventually understood that everything was happening according to God's will. So, he had a small shop. Buyers would come to him and he would say to the buyer, to a buyer, this, the price by God's will, the price of the of this cloth is so much. And the, gradually the people came to know that he was a very honest person. He had come to buy. One day that cloth seller or that weaver was sitting on the porch, front porch of his house at night. He was by sitting there, he would chant the holy name of God and with great joy that to him, everything was the doing of God. And to him, Lord Rama was God. Everything happens to the will of Rama. And two burglars at night, they thought that they would burglar home, but they had a third one companion. But the third one would be asked to carry the loot in a large bag. So the third one for some reason was ill and he could not come. And those two burglars when they are going, they saw this man sitting on the porch of his home. And they forced him to go with them. And then they entered a home and they stole many things, valuable things and put them in a large sack put that sack on that on this weaver's back. And then the police came and they got the they got the idea that the police has come and then they escaped. But this <coughs> weaver was left there. The police came and arrested the weaver took him to the police station. In the morning, some of the villagers who knew this weaver came. They said, oh, it is a great mistake. You can never steal. Then the weaver told the story of how those two burglars had forced him to go with them and so on. And Hearing that st story, the police officer, chief, he released this person. So he went back to his shop and then people asked him, what happened? Then he said, well, by the will of Rama, I was sitting on the porch of my front, <laughs> on the front porch of my house at night, and by the will of Rama, Two burglars forced me to go with them. Then by the will of Rama, they entered a home and stole some valuable goods, put in a sack, put that sack on my shoulder. And meanwhile, the police came. Those two burglars escaped, but police got me there. And then I was taken to the police station by the will of Rama. 
and then by the will of Rama, some of the neighbors came and they knew me. So, and they said to the police officer that I was innocent. And then by the will of Rama, the police officer released me. So, a person who walks the path of bhakti, devotion, he eventually may feel that everything happens according to the will of God. And there is nothing good or nothing bad. Whether something is good or bad is determined by selfishness. And through the practice of this path of love of God, that selfishness goes away. That ego disappears. And then God experience comes. So this is Bhakti Yoga. And to that person, everything happens according to the will of God. Thank you.